Hello, everybody, and welcome to this information event for the Red Hill Teaching Hub. We're very pleased to see so many of you here and have the chance to talk to you in a little more detail about the new national network of hubs and in particular about the Red Hill Hub and the role the hub will play in teacher development in our designated area within Nottinghamshire. There's a lot of information to communicate during this event and I'm aware that some of it may be very new to some of you. Please be assured that this webinar will be recorded and posted on our website later this week. If you feel that other colleagues in your school would benefit from watching the webinar, please feel free to point them in the direction of the recording on our holding website, which I'll tell you more about in a moment. During this live event, you will have a chance to pose questions to us and if there is an opportunity at the end of the presentation, we will try to answer some of the key questions. However, we will also be producing an FAQ sheet in response to any questions raised both here today and over previous weeks in our inquiries emails. We will post this out to you as soon as possible before half term. That said, if you have any pressing questions after this event, please do feel free to contact us directly and we will be more than happy to help you in whichever way we can. Our contact details will be on the closing side of, uh, slide of this presentation. So my name is Sally Barfoot and I am hosting this event today as the director of the Hub. I've had more than 30 years experience in schools as a teacher, leader and facilitator. I've taught at the Red Hill Academy for over 20 years and have been overseeing the Red Hill Teaching School Alliance for the last few years. I have a real passion for teaching and learning and was previously an AST, lead practitioner and SLE and my extensive background in designing and delivering CPD and leadership training in both primary and secondary phases will firmly underpin my future leadership of the hub. I'm joined today by colleagues from across our partnership which at a strategic level includes Minster Trust for Education, Diverse Academies Trust and the Flying High Partnership. Unfortunately, Serena Selig is not able to be with us today and uh, Delia Higgins has uh, very kindly offered to step in, to, uh, in, her, in her stead. Um, we are hosting this event jointly because collaboration at a school level, a regional level and a national level lies at the heart of our ethos and intent. Wherever possible, we will advocate and promote a school led system based on mutual support and effective sharing of best practice. The briefing today will be broken into four elements. The role of the hub, including a brief explanation of its structure, the vision we share for teacher development across the region and nationally, the core offer at the heart of the hub, and most importantly, what this all means for you and your schools. Throughout the presentation, you will be given information about how to register your interest to work with us. And most of you will have already completed the form attached to the invitation to this event and have therefore been added to our mailing list. If you want to be added to our mailing list and have not yet done so, please do complete the form that was attached in your invitation. In the follow up email you will receive sub sub subsequent to this event, you will be sent all the web and registration links that appear in this presentation. So please don't worry about having to write them down or remember them. To make things easier over the coming weeks, we have created a holding website or splash page on which you will find recordings of our briefings and events, information about our core offer and the links which enable you to access that offer. The temporary website will go live in the next few days and we will message all of you on our mailing list directly to alert you when it's up and running. The first focus of our briefing is to explain the role of the hub. You may have been to briefings for the other hubs locally or already have an understanding of the new DFE hub initiative or be coming to this uh, event knowing very little. In order to understand the role of the hub, I think it is important to recognise that the hubs have a very different function and relationship with schools to that of their predecessor, the Teaching School Alliances. The hubs have a centrally directed remit to improve the recruitment and retention of teachers and leaders through the provision of a high class evidence based programme of teacher development. 
The hubs will support all schools in their designated areas who express an interest in working with them, regardless of existing affiliations. As a regional hub, we will work alongside existing organisations and our strategic and delivery partners and not in competition, as our aim is to create a more even and cohesive distribution of support, advice and expertise across our region. There is no financial burden to schools in accessing their regional hub as the core offer is not charged and the hub is currently funded by the DfE. The Red Hill Hub is the designated hub for Gedling, Bassett Law and Newark and Sherwood. The Carlton Academy, uh, Carlton, sorry, Carlton Junior Academy is the designated lead school for our hub and the Red Hill Academy Trust is the accountable mat. Beyond our strategic partners shown here, we want to, excuse me, shown here, <laughs> we want to work with other organisations within the county, including multi-academy trusts, dioceses, local authority, HEIs and accredited providers to ensure that the cohesive support we talked about is made truly accessible to as many schools and teachers as possible. Already in the short time we've had to work on setting up the hub, the partnership has begun to reveal its potential and the benefits of more purposeful and frequent cross organisational conversations with a shared agenda will, I am sure, start to ripple out across the county and beyond. By facilitating a regionally collaborative approach to teacher development, the hub aspires to have a positive impact at an individual school level, a regional level, and consequently, as this is replicated by other hubs in other regions, at a national level. As director, it has been a joy to be party to initial conversations with those within and beyond our designated region, which transcends the barriers that the system had unwittingly produced over the last few years. Central to the success of our hub will be our ambition to make sure it is founded on genuine collaboration, where all those who have influence in the county feel represented and included. There are now 87 hubs covering 87 newly defined geographical areas over the whole of England. These will replace the 900 uh, teaching school alliances which previously, uh, which currently exist, sorry. Each hub has a responsibility to work directly with the schools in their particular area and sometimes beyond in order to provide a clear and impactful programme of teacher development at all career stages and across all phases of education, including special schools and alternative provision. Teaching school alliances will be phased out prior to September and the new hubs will provide regionally based training and development focused much more heavily on nationally accredited evidence based programmes of support, which are available to all schools as, and as I previously said, not just those affiliated to a particular trust or alliance. As a partnership, we are incredibly excited to have the opportunity to build upon the existing successes of our schools, alliances and mats to develop this new freely accessible offer. We will in essentially be a one stop shop for CPD training and support. Easy to find, easy to talk to and easy to use. I like to think that we are kind of the information centre uh, for schools. We will signpost the very best support that is available to you through organisations like the Maths and English Hubs, the Science Learning Partnerships, Research Schools, enhancing and promoting their offer widely. We will deliver initial teacher training, the early career framework and appropriate body services. We will also deliver the new suite of MPQs and build up a wider bespoke training programme which directly meets the specific needs of our region. As previously stated, the direct remit of the new network of hubs is to support the recruitment and retention of the very best workforce for schools. Ultimately, the workforce we create and support together will have a huge impact on the outcomes for children in this region. The hub will give us a unique opportunity to genuinely work together across the region, harnessing and signposting existing expertise, 
developing together and collaborating to ensure that all schools have equitable access to high quality evidence-based CPD and training, and that the journey of teachers in this region from ITT to leadership is one of enrichment and support. Our core purpose will lie at the heart of our strategic decision-making and our quality assurance processes. The hub will rationalise a training offer which is currently very diverse and inconsistent and our offer will be supported at a national level by the DfE and accredited providers. We are hugely excited about the possibilities this presents for us all and very much hope you will support the hub with faith and trust that our ethos and core purpose are firmly rooted in the desire to bring a diverse region together in neutrality to work to raise outcomes for all children. Whilst there will be a very obvious golden thread through our core offer, creating pathways from recruitment to become an expert in the classroom and then moving on to leadership, there will also be a golden thread of high quality support woven through our provision. We will work directly with schools and teachers to impact the wider education community in which we work with the ultimate aim of impacting the outcomes for the children we teach. Before we look at the specifics of our core offer, I would quickly like to summarise how we see ourselves working with you, the schools in our region. First of all, we are determined that our offer will be nothing short of excellent at all levels. That golden thread of provision leading to the gold standard in training and development. As existing teaching school alliances, we've prided ourselves on the quality of support and training we offer, and as a hub, our drive to stand out as a reliable source of the very best in CPD support will be undiminished. Each partner brings a wealth of experience and expertise to the hub, but we also have an opportunity to expand that expertise through new regional partnerships and ensure that the very best practice is being shared across the region by the very best people in order to have the highest impact possible. Secondly, as a teacher and leader who sees the reality of school every day, I am acutely aware of how busy school leaders are and want the hub to take some of that strain by providing clear and concise communication which leaders can assimilate quick, quickly, understand if something needs more attention and pass information on to staff in good faith that details have been checked and, provide, and links have been provided to information that are obvious and ready to use. We will provide a direct booking service for CPD on our website, maintain clear lines of communication and always be here to answer questions and queries. Thirdly, the key to sharing best practice successfully will lie in our ability to connect schools to a productive network of information and support. We will provide direct access to the DfE hubs, the research schools and other schools and organisations which can positively influence our practice. The curriculum hubs and research schools will be working with us to ensure their offer meets the needs of schools in this region and that we genuinely work together to plug the gaps. Reviewing our impact will be key and we want to involve the schools in our region in feeding back to us on our impact. Our offer will be constantly reviewed and renewed to keep pace with the needs of schools. We will be asking a group of head teachers to be part of a hub review group on a yearly road to basis giving us feedback on our service and delivery models and ensuring we are meeting the needs of the various schools in our region. We want to work beyond existing barriers to be the organisation which sits in the middle of this region, supporting you to make a difference. On the next few slides, I want to outline our core offer to you. This offer is defined by the DfE and all hubs will be delivering the same core offer, but with variability in terms of chosen national providers and delivery models. The overview of the core offer is outlined here. You will see the golden thread of provision supporting teachers from the very beginning of their careers into leadership pathways. The premise of delivering support for teachers from the start of the career along the trajectory of their career development is one that has underpinned our provision as a teaching school as, as teaching school alliances for several years now and we have a wealth of expertise and experience to bring this offer alive. We are currently in the process of recruiting a pool of facilitators from across the partnership to deliver on different aspects of this offer. We want to spend a little bit more time now on the early career framework in particular 
as this connected with the appropriate body services is probably the area where schools will feel the most tangible change in policy and provision. We will in a short while also look in more detail at the MPQs which have also been reformed. Early career framework uh, reforms are part of the government's teacher recruitment and retention strategy, which aims to improve the training and development opportunities available to teachers. The vision is to attract even more people into the profession, make sure careers in teaching are attractive, rewarding and sustainable, and then make sure teachers are supported, not just to stay, but to thrive. And at this point, I would like to pass on to my colleague Delia Higgins, who has been heavily involved with the early rollout of the Early Career Framework last year and is Early Career Framework lead with Diverse Academies Trust. Over to you, Delia. Hello, lovely to get a chance to speak to you about this, um, what uh, Professor Sam Twizzleton call at Sheffield Institute for Education calls a game changer. Um, in what we are providing for our early career teachers. Um, the teacher recruitment and retention strategy came about because of the number of early career teachers leaving the profession, um, especially after the NQT year. And the, the vision really was to provide a seamless kind of hub between ITT, then the NQT year, and then the RQT year. Um, and and that and that is really what's going to be quite a different approach to keeping hold of these brilliant people who come into teaching. So what is the offer? Well, it's a fully funded offer for two years um, and it very much is an entitlement for all early career teachers in England. OK, um, it they will they will receive a bespoke high quality training and development materials and I've had a glimpse of that uh, as part of the early career um, rollout this year and it's for the first two years of teaching and uh, the program will look quite distinctive in terms of regional training local group sessions uh, webinars and self study sessions but they will all follow um, the ECF uh, framework. OK, um, in the first year, <clears throat> teachers will have um, as, as currently 10 percent time of timetable um, and that's already existing now. But um, after that, that will then add uh, be added to with an extra 5 percent um, of timetable in the second year um, to enable them to complete the training. OK, um, and as part of that, Obviously, there'll be change for mentors, which is I'll talk about later. OK, let's let's have a look at the detail then. As you can see from this slide, uh, there are significant changes um, to the early career teacher induction, not the least that it's going from one year to two years. OK, and these are the requirements that schools will be required to do. OK, so obviously the change in time and um, the content will be defined by the early career framework. So the early career teacher has 10% of time of timetable in the first year and this obviously is ring fence for them to complete this professional development. Um, and then obviously there'll be additional funding for them to actually work off timetable um, to complete the training in the second year. Um, all schools have to produces provision for their early career teacher and we're going to the training delivery options in a moment but let's have a little look at the role of the mentor um last year at westminster when they introduced the early career framework and uh, the rollout phase the role of the mentor was really pushed and i'm very excited about that that's something that i've really appreciated just even in these early phases so the role of the mentor it currently isn't defined but across the um in in terms of the of the actual rollout the early career teacher will have access to two years support from a designated mentor separate from the induction tutor. So the mentor will provide a coaching cycle, if you like, ongoing with all the materials. They'll receive dedicated training and then the uh, induction tutor will um, obviously assess them against the standards. So the 
these two things are marked as separately. It's important to say you can't fail the early career framework. It's there as an entitlement and a sort of support, and it's closely linked with the teaching standards and it enables uh, teachers to actually succeed at them uh, rather than uh, wobble. OK, um, so consistent mentoring is seen as key to the role of retaining teachers. So it's so valuable um, that the DFE has provided funding um, in order for them to actually be even better than they currently are and actually have that uh, chance to have the extra training. The induction tutor obviously is expected to coordinate and provide the guidance for the early career teacher and make sure everything's as it should be. And obviously as part of the assessment, uh, they're marking them against the teacher standards. The assessment is slightly altered. Instead of one assessment at the end of one year with a couple of interim assessments, that will now change to two main assessments at the end of each year with review points built into that. OK, so that's um, th that will be undertaken by uh, the induction tutor um, and obviously supported and QA'd by the um, appropriate body. Let's have a look at the appropriate body now and and, and get the detail. For us, um, we're continuing to work, uh, partner with Notts County Council and they are part of um, the Red Hill Teaching Hub offer um, and have been very, very successful for very many years. Um, they're going to provide the QA service for all of the schools within this project and they're going to be forming a big part of what is provided. Yeah. At this point, I'm just going to ask Sally to um, just give clarify the details. Clarify, yeah, sorry. 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 Yeah. sorry, I just want to clarify that um, the Red Hill Hub will be providing appropriate body services, oh, yeah. as will Nottinghamshire County Council, as will Flying High Hub, and schools will have a choice as to who they choose for their appropriate body. We will be partnering with selected schools in the first year to provide an appropriate body service, and we will be um, putting on a specific webinar um, in the coming weeks that focuses just on appropriate body and early career framework and we'll explain that in more detail. Thank you very much to Sally. OK, let's have a look at the uh, different options then. OK, so there are three options that are available to you as CEOs or head teachers when considering training your early career teachers. Option one um, is to use a training provider to support meeting the new statutory induction requirements and the hub can help you with this because we've teamed up with the Educational Development Trust, um, one of six national providers giving a license to deliver the uh, early career framework. Very excited about that because uh, they're a fabulous um, uh, partner. OK, we're working for de as deliberate partners for the EDT and will provide a regionally adapted programme in three centres based in Gedling, Bassett Law and Newark and Sherwood. These centres are highly likely to be the partner schools of Red Hill, Minster and Tuxford. And the regional programme is going to be delivered by experienced and trusted local facilitators. And that's for me, the strength of the EDT is that they seek that kind of partnership. So we've got many, many presenters from across all of the academies who are raring to go with this and excited to to join in. This is called the full induction programme. OK, um, the second option is to deliver your own induction programme in your schools uh, using the materials um, and resources uh, pro uh, accredited by the DfE, for example, using provision from one of the accredited providers. And this is the core induction programme, OK, or CIP. And option three is to design your own two year programme uh, using the early career framework as a basis. And this is the school based induction programme. And it's really, really important. I can't stress the importance of this too much. Uh, in terms of choices, <clears throat> you really need to understand the implications of each choice. That choice number one, I've been through a very, we've been through a, a provider led um, induction. And it is very, very important to realise that lots of um, thinking and quality assessment has already gone into place for that. 
um, and places are limited. It's a full induction programme um, and all the checks have been made and will be made. Um, so for yourself, as Sally was talking about, you know, in terms of lightening the load, that definitely does that for you because all the materials are there, all the training is there and obviously for mentors and for ECTs and there's additional funding to backfill the mentor time all built into that programme. The core induction programme and the school based in induction programme, those two options are there, but there will be fidelity checks which will need to be carried out um, by the appropriate body and schools obviously will be accountable, especially in option three, for um, absolutely quality assuring what the provision is and what is being done. Um, schools should carefully consider the options of the individual circumstances of each school and think about the, uh, the finance and workload. And obviously we would be happy to provide guidance and advice to say what's, which, what schools are considering. However, it must be said that the F, uh, FIP, the full induction places may well be limited by region uh, as allocation of places is defined by the DfE. So early registration would be advisable. So why the EDT? Pretty excited about this one. Um, all that is said on this slide has got a real commitment to work with schools. Um, I, as as part of the early I watched the presentation of all all six providers, and the EDT were absolutely head and shoulders uh, above the rest. They've got this massive um, approach of partnership, and obviously with uh, Sheffield Institute of Education and the fact that they've been so heavily involved in co-creating the ITT core framework and then the ECF. Um, the research base is second to none, it's pretty much cutting edge um, and they've worked very, very hard on a national scale. Um, and one of the interesting things is the way that they work at group level uh, with specialisms for early years, special schools, primary, secondary and subject and key stage areas. That that for us was really important. Why Red Hill um, as, as a programme? It's fully funded. Uh, with additional funding to release mentors for training. You have got that choice of locations in our geographical area, Gedling, Bassett Law and Newcastle Sheward. That's really, really important to be able to get to the places for both mentors um, and early career teachers. Um, we were part of the um, ECF pilot, so um, that's that 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 experience is there um, uh, at delivering highly impact highly impactful professional uh, development and we've obviously got that link to um, the kind of the research base. Primary and secondary facilitators are going to be available at all local sessions because we know the importance of that um, and obviously we've got that continuous quality assurance and support for all participants and obviously we've got that alignment with appropriate body services. So just as a final point, um, these are the things that you need to, um, to do at the moment to register with the hub um, in order to get all the subsequent information, especially if you're not set yourself up on the mailing list. You need to obviously um, register for the full induction programme um, and obviously we've partnered with, with the Educational Development Trust, so you need to go to their website and either select Red Hill Teaching School or Flying High Teaching School, depending on location. And um, if you do have early careers teachers starting induction, you obviously need to go to the DFE portal to onboard them um, and um, to actually choose your package there. You would need to do the drop down to access the portal and use an approved tra uh, training provider for the full induction package. And um, obviously you will want to know more and there's a lot of detail already in this. So book the Red Hill Teaching School Hub Early Career Teacher Webinar, which is going to be on Wednesday the 9th of June um, at pretty much the same time. OK, I'm going to pass back to Sally to give you um, uh, the rest of the information and look very much forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Delia. Um, 
I, I get a, a weekly feedback from EDT as to how many people have registered their ECTs with EDT to do the full induction programme through our hub. Um, so I, I, I've had some information through already and I can see people are booking on already, so thank you. Um, I hope we've made the, the links and the process really, really easy for you to understand there. Um, but it's important that you follow all of those steps in order to register your ECTs. And I can't stress enough that those places may well be limited. So please, if you've got ECTs and you want to access the full induction programme through the hub, please book them on there as soon as possible. Um, so I now want to talk a little bit about the national professional qualifications because these have also been reformed by the DfE. Um, and as a partnership, we have always had a massive commitment to leadership development and are keen to ensure that the new suite of MPQs are a success for our regional schools. As such, we have sought out a national provider who really understands our regional context as, and is in fact based in Nottinghamshire. We've also chosen a provider who will give us the flexibility to add extensive regional context to our leadership programmes. This is going to be leadership development by schools for schools and that principle is a principle we have always stood by. It has always been at the heart of our ethos when developing leaders and we're thrilled that our trusted expert leaders will continue to sit at the heart of our MPQ offer, continuing to offer the wealth of expertise and experience we value so much. And at this point, I want to pass on to my colleague Dave Boothroyd um, from uh, MITRE, who is going to tell us a bit more detail about the reforms of the national professional qualifications. Thank you, Dave. Thank you very much, Sally. And uh, hello, everybody. It's great to be here as part of this partnership and, and be able to talk to you about the national professional qualifications. Um, so I'm just going to take about five minutes or so just to talk to you a little bit about um, the reforms uh, to the national professional qualifications uh, more generally that you might really know a little bit about. And then also talk a little bit about the delivery of those by the Red Hill Teaching Hub. Um, so first of all, you can see here that this is very much uh, the MPQs are a part of this golden thread of teacher development that lasts throughout from the very earliest stages of a teacher's career right through to uh, executive leadership. Um, and you can see that this fits into very much this content framework that takes you from the ITT core content framework during your ITT training year through to that early career framework um, that Delia was just talking about and then through into the MPQs both specialist MPQs for experienced teachers and middle leaders through then into the leadership MPQs for senior leaders, heads and executive leaders. Um, so this is very much a, a continuation of, of that golden thread. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the reforms and some of the changes that might be a little bit different from, from the ones that uh, many of you would have already taken throughout your career. So this is quite a handy slide that just tells you a little bit about what's changing. I'm not anticipating reading through all of this now. Uh, the slides will be available along with a recording of this presentation on the Red Hill Teaching Hub website uh, by the end of, of this week. Um, but there are some important changes. Um, firstly, in terms of the qualifications that are offered, uh, you can see that the current arrangements, uh, the one that we've been used to for a period of time now, MPQ ML for, for middle leaders, SL, H and executive leadership. That's one of the biggest changes is that MPQ ML is disappearing, a, a slightly more generic programme for all middle leaders. There are now going to be three specialist MPQs introduced from September 2021. So first of all, MPQ in leading teacher development, as you can see, it talks about their supporting the training and development of others, including early career teachers. So this MPQ is particularly suitable for people involved in developing uh, other teachers. That could be as a mentor through, through ITT. It could be uh, as a lead practitioner or a professional tutor kind of role in school, but very much about developing uh, others as teachers. Then there's an MPQ uh, in leading teaching, and uh, as it says, they're developing teachers who are subject leaders or responsible for improving teaching practice. So in a secondary school, a, a head of department, a, a curriculum team leader, it could be the leader of a phase or a subject in, in, a, in, a, in a primary school. And then there's also going to be an MPQ in leading behaviour and culture. So particularly for those teachers who have got responsibilities for leading those elements in school. So some changes in terms of the um, MPQ ML becoming the specialist uh, MPQs and then the three existing MPQs, so SL, H and EL uh, remaining, but very much being refreshed uh, and another look taken again at, at their content and the way that they're delivered. 
There's also some changes in terms of the assessment process. So traditionally, all of the MPQs have been assessed through a school improvement project the last uh, at least two terms. Um, and that then is then assessed against the mark scheme effectively, looking at the six different content areas. Uh, the big change here for assessment is that um, the assessment will take the form of a case study. So looking at a likely situation to be faced by a teacher at that level of MPQ uh, in a kind of open book format with an eight day calendar window um, to present a written response to that case study. Finally, there's some changes in terms of funding. Um, so uh, we'll be aware of the, the current scholarship funding arrangement, which was very much based around category five or six local authority areas. Um, the, there is going to be scholarship funding available. There is still some uncertainty about that, which we'll confirm as soon as we possibly can. Um, but there will be scholarship funding, which we'll talk about in just a moment or two. So the golden thread of professional development, the MPQs are absolutely a part of that golden thread. And you can see that this is uh, intended to be based upon a core content framework that runs right the way through initial teacher training, the early career framework, and then into the national professional qualifications. So that when you take an MPQ, either a specialist one uh, in leading teaching, for example, or an MPQ uh, for headship, it's building upon the existing knowledge uh, and skills that teachers have already developed at earlier stages in their career. So you can see there, for example, teaching curriculum and assessment uh, features heavily, as you would expect, in each of those three strands of, uh, of development, early career support, specialist development and leadership development. And some of the others are introduced at a later stage. So, for example, professional development uh, and one of them, the organisational management and governance, just at the leadership development end. But there is a core content which builds upon the work that's already been done through ITT and the ECF. Next, this is quite a helpful overview, I think, in terms of the MPQs. Um, first of all, who the programme is for. So if we take the MPQ in leading teaching, you can see this is very much aimed at subject, curriculum, key stage leaders. Uh, there's then um, a total course duration. So for the specialist MPQs, that's 15 months, which is normally 12 months of study and then three months uh, for the assessment uh, at the end, um, up to 21 months for the leadership MPQs. There is then um, very much a blended learning approach that's been taken in each of the national professional qualifications. So including some self-led hours, self-directed learning, face-to-face uh, -face and coaching. And you can see that the, the, the number of hours allocated to each of those on the way through and then a little bit of information about where this learning will take place so again for the mpq in leading teaching uh, there is an element of virtual learning but then also face to face in local cohorts and then uh, a little bit of information although more to follow on the funding from the dfe to support engagement in each of those national professional qualifications so you can see here at the moment the mpq leading teacher development and mpq for headship um, there is funding available uh, with criteria based funding uh, and we'll talk just mention that briefly in just a moment or two, but criteria based funding available for the other national professional qualifications. So our offer as the Red Hill Teaching Hub um, is very much part of a local partnership, as you can see from this slide. Uh, so the provider, the pri provider is responsible for structure, content design and assessment. And just like Delia was um, speaking about a moment or two ago with the ECF, a lot of thought and care has gone into the selection of the of the provider for the national professional qualifications. So this is the Church of England Foundation for Educational Leadership in partnership with the Catholic Education Service. And as you can see, it says there, there there's a sharp focus on rich and evidence informed content and and particularly a strong emphasis on coaching. So coaching being a key part of each of the national professional qualifications and then also very much a commitment to vision driven education. And I'll come come on more to that in just a moment. Um, inspiring leaders have that role um, uh, locally in terms of marketing and engagement of, in, in the programmes and a lot of a wealth of experience that they have uh, involved in the national professional qualifications over many years. And then the two um, teaching school hubs, so the Red Hill Teaching Hub and the Flying High Teaching School Hub, being the, those local delivery hubs responsible for content delivery and participant support. Um, so both of those um, teaching school hubs uh, with a wealth of experience, high quality delivery, an experienced pool of uh, facilitators and coordinators of those programmes and lots of experience in succeeding uh, high completion rates and high success rates for those national professional qualifications. A little bit more about the Red Hill Teaching School, uh, sorry, the Red Hill Teaching Hubs offer. Uh, firstly, as you can see, it's delivered by a partnership with a lot of experience uh, and expertise in the design and delivery of MPQs and leadership development. Uh, that's something that we're very proud of, and that's something that this partnership brings to the offer of MPQs. Um, 
not only that, but a lot of support at all levels of delivery and assessment. So very much right from the, the, the start of registering your interest in the programme right the way through to completion. Um, every participant we can guarantee will feel like we know them, that we're aware of them, that we're supporting them through the process in being successful and, and developing themselves professionally. The Foundation for Educational Leadership, um, we're very much motivated by, um, there's a strong focus on social justice as a key driver for their engagement in MPQs. And that's something that resonates very much with us in our local area, looking at the, the local authority districts in particular that we serve in Newark and Sherwood, uh, Bassett, Law and Gedling. Social justice being a really important driver for our engagement in the MPQs and their delivery. Um, we particularly are proud of the, the hybrid or blended delivery models. Um, there is no doubt that we've all learnt uh, to do things on Teams uh, and Zoom and various other things, but there is absolutely a face-to-face -face delivery model, which is a core part of the learning uh, that all participants experience in our nas national professional qualifications, which is really important. Alongside that, that personalised development through instructional coaching, every participant on the national professional qualifications through the Red Hill Teaching Hub will have a, a coach that works with them directly to support and challenge them in, in their in their progress. And then finally, uh, very much a, a focus on both personal and professional growth. Um, absolutely, these national professional qualifications through this um, uh, provider and in this delivery partnership are about um, having an impact and, and succeeding for students, but it's also about developing yourself and understanding yourself. Um, and that's incredibly important, we feel, in maintaining high quality people within the profession. Just a, 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 a few last notes. We've mentioned funding a few times. I'm, I'm afraid we're still not in a position where we can absolutely uh, nail down the detail on this. Um, but we, our current understanding is that there will be funded scholarships dependent on the level of MPQ and also the eligibility of the school at which the teacher is employed. Uh, and the key um, um, driver there will be the percentage of pupils on pupil premium. That will be the, the key criteria. As soon as we have further information on that and can confirm it, we'll be in touch and make sure that you're absolutely aware of, of the information regarding the funded scholarships and all of, the, all of that detail. MPQs will commence in November, so there's a, there's a little bit of um, a kind of lead in time to that, but registration is required by the 25th of September. So it is really important, just like Delia was saying with the ECF, that um, people interested are uh, signed up and registered. Uh, we will issue a registration form next week and make sure that that is sent to everybody on the mailing list and that's communicated really well. And once um, we have um, expressions of interest, we can support people through the registration process, make sure that's done in a, in a, in a, in a timely way. So you can express an interest immediately and then um, it, over the next few weeks, months, we'll keep in touch as further information comes through and make sure that everyone is aware of the next steps that they need to take. OK, so at that point, I'm going to hand back over to Sally. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Um, as you can say, we're playing musical chairs here, but um, it's been really nice to actually um, talk to human beings um, rather than sitting on separate laptops. So it's been uh, really nice to talk to Dave and Delia today. Um, so I just want to say a little bit more about CPD and after that um, I will wrap up this meeting. Um, so we do have a remit to deliver a wider CPD across the region. Um, however, we've been asked by the DfE to focus on the early career framework and national uh, professional qualifications and setting of power appropriate body services. So I, I, I think this side of things will grow. Uh, quite rapidly, um, but it will grow over the coming year um, or two. What we will be doing immediately is working with these sort of organisations across the region, um, the maths hubs, the English hubs, the, the music hubs, um, the, the computing hubs and the science learning partnerships and the research schools, putting you in touch with their expertise and making you fully aware of their extensive and excellent offer. Um, I know my own, um, our own um, director of primary education, Julie Wardle, um, who used to head up the Cotton Junior Academy, is a great fan of the English Hub and has been truly inspired by the CPD she has received there. And it, it's only fair that every school in the region should know about that offer and have equal access to it. So our final bit of this presentation is how is this going to affect your school? Well, I really hope 
that you will be as excited about working with us as we are about working with you. And I really hope that you will engage with the offer that we put out into the region. Um, we want you at the end of uh, or one or during your time with us to think of us as providing the very, very best CPD possible. And we want to really develop that reputation for being the best at delivering CPD and training. We want you to be able to rely on our expert facilitators, our expert coordinators, and the fact that you can go to a session and go and get out of it what you expect to get out of it. We also want to be known for having that personal touch we want you to be able to pick up the phone and talk to us uh, quickly, easily, contact us through email, and we want to be able to deal with any problems that you might have and put you in touch with people quickly and easily. We also want to be known for our expertise. The Red Hill Hub has experienced and trusted staff at every level not just our facilitators, but also in the administration team that stands behind the hub. And finally, and probably most importantly, we want to be to help you make a difference in your schools. We hope that by working together with the hub, it will enable you to recruit and develop and retain excellent teachers. I'm just going to go over the key documents or links that you will need in order to register your interest to work with us. You can register using an MS form that was sent out in your invitation to be put on our mailing list. And by doing that, you will receive invitations to all future events and a regular newsletter. If you have an ECT training with you from September, you need to register them on the DFE portal. And if you are choosing to access the full induction programme for the early career framework for your ECTs, you will need to register them both with EDT. And if you could fill in the form um, that will indicate to us how many ECTs you have and how many you intend to train through us, that will help us manage numbers and prepare for our delivery of our programme. Our next briefing will be held on the 9th of June and the core focus will be the early career framework. We will also talk quite a lot about the appropriate body service that we are setting up um, in partnership with Nottingham, Not Nottinghamshire County Council and uh, the Flying High Hub. We will also give you a little bit more detail on some of that wider CPD I've talked about. Subsequent to that, there will be another briefing devoted purely to MPQs. And as things develop, there will be further briefings with very specific foci rather than this global one that we've done today that hopefully has given you a feel for what the hub will represent and what the hub will do and what it's hoping to achieve as long term aims. Next, next steps, if you want to contact us, are here. Our website address is there. It's not live yet, but there will be a holding website coming live in the next couple of days, hopefully, definitely by the end of the week. My contact details are there. And we also have an inquiries um, email address to which you can send any inquiries for the admin team to pick up. We thank you very much for joining us today. I really hope you found it useful. I know we've thrown a lot of information your way. Um, if we can help you in any way, please do get in touch and we hope to speak to you again very soon.